So this is a new <clears throat> video where I wanted to touch on um, a few concepts that I think people may, that are talked about a lot in spiritual circles, but that I don't think are necessarily understood correctly or conceptualized correctly. So um, this video is called Enlightenment, Ego, and Essence. Now these three terms the, the two terms, ego and essence, kind of are derived almost directly from the Gurdjieff teaching, where he had the two terms, personality and essence, and he had the other two terms, knowledge and being, that knowledge is correlated with the personality, and that being was cor uh, corresponded with the essence of the human being. The term enlightenment... Um, obviously comes from the Buddhist tradition, but also it had some precedence in the yogic tradition, the Vedanta tradition, with moksha, so, or, you know, spiritual liberation. Now, these kind of three terms, not so much the essence term, that's a more of a special term, it may have other origins than just Gurdjieff, Sufism, whatever, I'm not sure about that, to be honest. I haven't encountered it many times in my reading, um, so I'm not sure. Whereas the concept of the ego, you hear that over and over again, and enlightenment, you hear that over and over again. But um, these kind of terms are kind of bandied about and thrown about, and I don't think people really understand often what they're talking about. I think people do have a sense, um, there are many people who have the experience of enlightenment and who understand it from that standpoint, and who have... Um, a clear intellectual picture of enlightenment and understand it in that standpoint. I think where the where most of the teachings and traditions fall short, with a few notable exceptions, um, you know, such as Douglas Harding in modern times and Dzogchen in you know historically, but most spiritual traditions fall short on a clear enlightenment methodology. And so I've tried to spell that out in other videos. So I'm not really going to discuss a great deal about that term enlightenment. I've already done it. So if you're interested, you can find the videos. Ninpo Warrior G. They're on the YouTube. So um, that said, I'm going to talk pr primarily about ego and essence. Now, what I've done is I've put a little drawing here. And you have, I don't know how clear this is going to come through, but what you have is you have this big circle, obviously, and that is kind of awareness. You know, that's the big spiritual awareness that underlies everything. Okay, now what you have here is this little being, this little body, and, and then you see right there this little bubble, these bubbles, this is their psyche, so the body and the psyche. So, um... Each of these has kind of three points of localization. The mental, which is at the head. The emotional, which I, th I think is at the solar plexus. And then the physical, which is kind of at the navel or the pelvis. Okay, so you have these two things, the body and the psyche. Now these are real. This, this, the sum total of this, this is the essence of the human being. The, the whole body-mind, the real actual structures. The underlying awareness, that's where enlightenment comes in. And then what you have, and before I go further with that, I just I had a few things that I had written down that I want to kind of just touch upon first. But, um, well, before, well, before I do that, let me just summarize the whole thing. So I said, okay, enlightenment, essence, which is the whole body-mind, essentially the essential human nature kind of what we have, you know, the real kind of thing, whatever it's composed of, you know, not, you know, which my theory is that it's composed of, it may at, at root be composed of ether, you know, ether being that fundamental substance that fills all space, and then magnetism, electricity, light, plasma, gas, liquid, solid. I've said this again and again in my physics of psychology videos, so you can watch those too. But there's the the question of the ego is a different question um the ego from my perspective is and, and it, this comes out of my own experiences but also just my own thinking about it and trying to figure out 
what exactly is the nature of this thing that people call the false self. And, and I got a lot of good insight from the writings of Gurdjieff because he says some very good, poignant things. And then there's many other kind of things that other people say that are, you know, kind of fishing, honestly. So this is my perspective on what the ego is. It, it may not be 100% accurate, but I think what it is is that human beings kind of in their psyche... Not in their physical body, but in their psyche right here, which I think is not... Their, the physical body is, is clearly composed primarily, predominantly of gases. I mean, of, of uh, liquids and solids. And then it has some gases in there. But I think that the psyche is predominantly composed of maybe gases, plasmas, and then all the magnetic, electric, you know, light, so on. So what happens in the psyche is that people find what you can see here is these little points not now in, in these drawings you have centers you have three centers mental emotional physical and that ties back to Gurdjieff's teaching but in, in this picture what you have is not centers but you have these little points these localizations these fixations what I call psychological positions which are not really they're they're just kind of like something that you for whatever reason you you become you say this is who I am it's, it's maybe a, you know, a complex of thoughts, a complex of emotions, or a certain way of perceiving others, the world, etc. But it's, it's often externally imposed. It, it may be internally, gen it's, I mean, it's in internally generated, but it's often externally imposed. And it's not really your essential human nature, which is just your body and your psyche. So it's kind of like this is where this notion of the false self comes in. So that's my basic theory of it. Now, why why are these terms important? Enlightenment, ego, essence, and ego. I think what's important to recognize is that this can tell us a great deal about human society and human civilization. These kind of concepts and these kind of theories. Much of human uh, history um, is really not only in in the individual, you know, life. But in the in the individual psychological level, or the or the you know or life, but also on the collective level, the social, economic, and political, much of what we see in human society and civilization is this struggle between essence and ego, between what is fundamental and real in human beings and what is kind of false and is essentially imposed often by. Um, you know, collective forces. And so this is what you see. This is the struggle that we've been going on through. And I, I want to touch on these points that I mentioned, at least a few of them that I haven't already touched on, which is just basically that you have the ego versus essence. You don't have to read this. I know it's chicken scratch, so don't worry about it. I'll just read it. <laughs> ego versus essence. Ego nature versus essential human nature on the individual and collective level, as I said. Now, as I said before, ego is psychological positions within the essential mental, emotional, and physical nature of the human being. It is, or seems to be, the primary obstruction to evolutionary development. Um, much of human history, we, we speak of human history as though it's real, you know, it really reflects on human nature and human beings. But I think that if we look at it correctly from this kind of perspective, we can observe that much of human history is the history of the human ego, not of human true human essence. Um, ego is a perversion of human nature through false, arbitrary, and unnecessary psychological positions. It's also what you're doing essentially is maintaining a static... Um, fiction in a dynamic spin reality. So most human beings, what they do is they seek either one of two things. They seek to find their identity or they seek to find happiness or to experience happiness, love, and peace through the ego. But these are these qualities, these, these properties, identity, true identity, or the true self is um, as well as real happiness, love, and peace are only intrinsically, inherently in the spiritual awareness. So it's impossible to find those in, through the ego, through any kind of psychological position. Um, 
and in fact, you can't even find, you can find some reflections of those in your essence, your, your, the essence of the human being, the mental, emotional, and physical essence of the human being, the psyche, and even in the body. But the true identity, who I really am, the true happiness, love, and peace, that's purely in spiritual awareness. Now, there's one other point that I think is just really important that people don't really understand. As I said before, that it's essentially on the individual level and the collective, it's essence versus ego. And depending on which one wins out, that determines what kind of society and civilization we're going to have. I mean, just to be honest with you. And I'm going to give you a few points to, to consider and to think about and to take away. I mean, assuming that you've listened to the whole video and, and really get what I'm trying to get at here and why. Um, what happens in life is everywhere around you, you're surrounded by the majority of beings, which I think in most societies, I think it's fair to say, I don't know if it's fair to, it's totally accurate, 100%, but in most societies, most societies are dominated at this time and throughout much of history by ego. And so what happens is you have um, most children who are coming purely from essence, they become attacked on all sides by egos all around them. And so their basic essence, their essential qualities, mentally, emotionally, and physically, are not nurtured, protected, supported, etc. So what can happen is, and often does happen, especially like in American uh, society, we see this very often, um, essence essentially retreats from or reacts to this collective ego violence with either psychological or physical resistance or reactions or violence. And that psychological stuff could be psychopathology. Um, the physical thing could be violence. It could be any other mix of things acting out. Um, much of what's happening in educational systems is actually ego trying to impose its will upon the essence of of the youth. Parents often make the same mistake. A, a few other points that are very important to consider from this standpoint and why it's important to nurture essence, the fundamental mental, emotional, and physical essence of the human being, ra and rather than, you know, undermining it and, and trying to attack it through ego, is you have to look at the case of African Americans in the United States as well as mass shootings that have happened, you know, they're very prevalent in the United States. Um, I think that what you're seeing with African Americans, with their aggression, violence, whatever, in this community, it, it stems out of the racist ego of America collectively, um, of whites in America predominantly, attacking the essence of African Americans, what they essentially are, not just mentally or emotionally, but physically, their actual essential physical nature. And the result, as I said, essence retreats from or reacts to ego violence with psychological or physical resistance or violence. I think mass shootings may be the same way. They say, well, he was so quiet and he was this and he's so he's this because those people tend to be coming from their essence and everybody around them is attacking them because they're coming from ego. And then essence reacts. But when essence, you know, shoots up the place, it's authentic because it's it's a, a outgrowth of long periods of ego violence. So these are very practical kind of principles, and I I just want to emphasize that as as a, a final note, just to say. It's very important to understand the essential nature of the human being correctly and its dis differentiation between the ego and to try to cultivate the essential mental, emotional, and physical nature um, in, in parenting, in education, um, and in all aspects of life and to not try to impose your ego on other people, to help to cultivate their essence you know, their natural human essence, and we can actually create the kind of civilization that's really worth living in, rather than, you know, what we've done so far. Um, and that's about it. Thanks.